Uh, so yeah, thanks for coming to our talk on the uh, fairly recently installed um, Zeiss Alira Lattice Sim. So it took us a bit of time, um, but we're very, very excited to have this um, really cool piece of kit uh, installed in our uh, PC2 facility here um, on the Parkville campus. So titled Live Soil Super Resolution Microscopy. Um, so to start off, um, let's start off very basically, why fluorescence? Um, it's a great question, uh, if I do say so myself. Um, so one reason why we, many reasons why we use uh, fluorescence. So we've got great sensitivity with very low concentration, stable fluorophores. Um, we can label things, it's not gonna interfere too much. Uh, we've got some decent specificity and uh, it's, it's fairly egalitarian um, as far as the accessibility, uh, but we really like to be able to do live imaging um, and put all these together and we've got a nice little package. Um, so one of the problems if you've done a bit of, uh, of fluorescence imaging is you'll run into maybe something that you can't quite resolve. Uh, you want a bit more resolution and um, you're gonna run up into something called the diffraction limit at a certain point. Um, so that point comes at about 250 nanometers. So if you're interested in looking at bacteria, uh, some nanoparticles, uh, exosomes, extracellular vesicles, all these sorts of things, you're not really gonna be able to resolve these. And uh, by resolve, I mean, be able to distinguish uh, two very close objects against each other. So um, we, we really wanna be able to tell in some cases how many fluorophores we have or how many um, objects, I guess I should say, we have, and uh, if we're if our spatial resolution doesn't quite cut it, then we're not going to be able to do that. Um, and so that's derived mostly from the wavelength and the numerical aperture of the system. So it's your um, your objective lens and all the sorts of bits of glass that the light needs to travel through uh, before it reaches your detector. So we have. Uh, handful, uh, maybe more than a handful these days, of uh, super resolution techniques available. Um, so most people would be familiar with confocal microscopy. Um, it's kind of the bread and butter assay for uh, a lot of fields. And that will generally get us down to about the diffraction limit. There are some nice tricks you can pull to sort of squeeze just a little bit past it, but uh, not too far in general. And so we have, uh, so I'll talk about a few different super resolution techniques that are commonly used and so the pros and cons of those. Um, so structured illumination is kind of next in line that gets you basically twice the resolution that you would achieve uh, with a sort of standard confocal micro microscope. And then you have a, a couple more specialized techniques. So there's STED, simulated emission depletion microscopy, and that's one that they're continually kind of pushing uh, sort of further and further down uh, to smaller and smaller objects. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that uh, shortly. And then uh, the single molecule localization microscopy, um, which has a sort of um, basically down to 10 nanometers, um, you know, with, a, with a, enough photons uh, from your sample. Um, if we're going to go beyond the realm of fluorescence, then, you know, you could do something like, um, like TEM, electron microscopy, and that gives you uh, quite a bit smaller, but then we lose some of the advantages. We can't really do that with um, live samples. Uh, labeling um, sort of specific targets is, is uh, not quite so simple there. Um, so let's go through a few of these super resolution techniques here. Um, so STED is, uh, it's basically taking a sort of standard spot that you would use with the confocal and then throwing another one on top of that that's in the shape of a donut. And um, what that will do is it, it will kind of cut out the excitation from that, that spot in the middle and give you a smaller spot. And you can sort of shape this donut beam, um, that is the technical term that they do use, um, to smaller and smaller, finer and finer points. And they claim, I've seen some claims of two nanometers, something like that, um, which is pretty amazing, actually. That's, that's a actually a really cool technique. Um, Next up, we have our single molecule localization microscopy. And this is a technique where um, rather than excite the entire population of your fluorophores all at once, um, you'll instead try to suppress almost all of them. So stop them all from blinking. You do that using a buffer. And then 
really blast your sample with a uh, high powered laser uh, in the case of storm, which is what, what I'll be discussing. Um, and through that, you'll cause a very small number of those, hopefully, to randomly fluoresce. And if we assume that when we see a, a, a blink, so one of those uh, fluorophores fluoresces, we assume that that is a actual single molecule. And if we do this over enough images, thousands and thousands of images, you get all these little blinks happening. Um, and you can, you can find the, the uh, centroid of each of those blinks uh, based on the number of photons you're receiving from that. So your precision, localization precision is based on the, the essentially the signal you get. And you can, you can fit uh, and find that, that centroid and uh, sort of build up positions. And if you do this thousands and thousands of times, you can end up with a uh, really nice super resolution image uh, with quite a lot of detail. Um, so for instance, here's a, a, um, something from uh, Francesca's group actually, um, of endosomal escape. And just a sort of example, which you see, this is two color um, end storm. Um, and then next up we have SIM. So this is structured illumination microscopy. Um, so this technique, we're not going to quite get to that. Uh, as I mentioned, we're not going to quite get to that resolution that we could with STED and the single molecule localization. Uh, but it does have some other advantages. So uh, what we do here is we can take our light source. And uh, this is going to be, um, rather than a point scanning system like the STED, this is going to be a full field on a, on a camera. Um, we'll take our light source, source and impart a sinusoidal pattern onto that. And um, so we get all these very, very narrow lines. And we can shift the phase of that so that those lines essentially cover the entirety of the image over the course of a few images. And then if we rotate that a couple of times, uh, we then basically have enough coverage that um, we can reconstruct a super resolution image. So when you're um, overlaying these two things, so if your structure, for instance, is um, this kind of more diagonal image, then you overlay this uh, sinusoidal pattern, the excitation, you get this lower frequency interference pattern. And uh, putting together all of these, you can get some reconstruction, uh, a reconstruction at about twice the resolution that you would be able to achieve uh, with a standard um, so diffraction limited instrument. So just throwing all those together into a, a table, um, so we've got great resolution with STED and, and uh, the single molecule, um, decent with the, the SIM. Um, STED is quite fast. The single molecule is quite slow. You're taking thousands and thousands of images. SIM is, is reasonable speed. Um, however, STED and the single molecule, those are much more limited in the fluorophores that you can use, STED especially so. Um, and the single molecule, you just need something that's going to blink nicely or be activatable. With SIM, however, you have a lot more flexibility. So you can generally, um, assume you have robust fluorophores, you can generally throw a sample on uh, to a system. And you might need to, for instance, add some uh, anti-fade reagent, but um, you generally should be able to at least get a decent image um, with, with most samples that you would also take to a confocal. Um, next question though, live imaging. So this is something that we're quite interested in. And um, instead, they'll claim, the, the vendors will claim that you can do live imaging and you can to a degree, but it is quite tricky because you're really hitting your sample with a lot of, um, a lot of laser load. Um, single molecule, that's uh, generally not gonna be possible. Um, SIM, with a standard conventional SIM, you can do it. Um, your limitation is generally going to be the laser load uh, on your sample. So it's not quite as bad as STED, but you can get some photo bleaching. Um, so other considerations to think about with a single molecule, you usually have a very shallow imaging depth. You're doing this at um, usually in turf mode, um, total internal reflectance. So that limits you to you know, hundreds of nanometers um, uh, into this uh, from the surface of your sample. So not very deep at all. SIM, also has depth issues, but not nearly as bad. You're, you're talking microns um, rather than nanometers, but you do uh, tend to get a fair amount of interference the deeper into your sample that you go. Um, so the instrument that we're talking that I'd like to discuss today is a variant on structured illumination, and that is called lattice sim. So 
uh, I'd mentioned that we have this linear pattern that we'll generally use as conventional sim. And so the, the uh, images you see here, that's not uh, color as in you know, different wavelengths of light. This is actually, just think about that as intensity, kind of like a heat map. Um, so you know, red is where your strongest signal is and blue and the darker colors um, to go into almost black there is signal drop off completely. So what if we, instead of this one dimensional pattern, we make a two dimensional pattern? And um, that actually does a lot of cool things for us. So um, the pr particular instrument, so you can do this in different sort of shapes. You can do a hexagon. Um, the instrument that we're using uh, the, that we, we have installed is a quadratic lattice. So just basically rectangular. Um, and if you take a look at this image here, so you can see um, this pattern actually imparted. So this would be a single uh, frame of acquisition of two color, um, uh, two color section. And so you can see that uh, that pattern imparted on the sample. Um, now, the nice thing about doing this two dimensional pattern is that we don't have to do that rotation. Um, so that saves us a fair amount of time. So um, generally with conventional sim, you'll do three angles and five phases. So that's 15 images. Now we're still gonna do almost 15 here. We can do 13 phases, but that actually gives us a lot more coverage and lets us do some pretty cool things. Um, so for instance, um, we get actually get a fair amount more information um, as far as depth goes. So you get more axial, res um, you get more axial information. And so you can do this, what, what Zeiss calls a leap mode. You can actually, um, while scanning through your sample, doing a stack, you can uh, skip, uh, only capture every third section. And um, you can get a reconstruction that actually follows quite closely um, if you had done the full uh, image of every single section. So we've tested that and it actually looks quite good, which is really amazing for you know, something like live imaging when you really are caring about every single photon that hits your, uh, hits your sample. So you can really save a lot of um, uh, photo toxicity, photo damage from your sample there. Um, and another cool thing is you get a lot more, uh, um, you get better penetration depth. So uh, this is something I just did earlier this week. I just wanted to chuck in, in here because I thought it was actually really neat to see. So um, this is a, a nano lattice structure. Um, so the, the width of these is about, um, I believe 500 or maybe well, closer to 700 nanometers. Um, tried this on our confocal and we could see the surface just nicely, but when you go about 10 or 12 microns in, it just starts to blur out like crazy. So your, your uh, light is scattering all over the place. Uh, it's a big mess basically. And you don't really resolve the other side of the sample. Um, with the lattice sim, actually, we were able to resolve and actually find the exact same structure because it is, is it was a uh, basically uniform through, and uh, we could we could resolve that. And uh, just to, to show you why that might be, if you look at the sort of space in between uh, in the uh, quadratic pattern, um, there's a, it, it actually goes a bit darker in between all of those gaps, so you get have a bit more space. So your difference between your um, uh, your, your higher excitation and then the, the gaps is actually um, quite a bit greater, which does help us with that penetration. Um, so yeah, to, to contribute to the lattice sim, uh, as far as the, the benefits with live imaging here, we don't need, need to use as much laser intensity as we would at the conventional sim. So that adds up to less phototoxicity and photo bleaching. Um, we end up getting faster acquisition. We have to do fewer phases. And that all adds up to, uh, you know, if we say, for instance, we're trying to capture something of a particularly fast time resolution, um, that will, will help us out there. And of course, less laser load on the sample itself. But what if we could do better? So um, we are soon to be installing an upgrade on the system, uh, which is Zeiss is called Sim Squared. Um, now the name is a, a bit, seems like a bit of a marketing gimmick, but we're not actually squaring anything as far as I understand. Um, but it is actually really amazing. So this is something I haven't actually seen in person yet, but uh, so this is going just from promotional materials from Zeiss, but you know, they have done this and, and uh, tested this extensively. Um, so what we can do is actually get another nearly twofold improvement in resolution here. So, um, that's taking, a, you can see our wide field sort of section of this image. Um, and uh, you, know, you get the standard sort of blur that you would get with a wide field image. We have our SIM, which is going to improve. We get sectioning capabilities. So everything looks much sharper and cleaner. 
um, we can then kind of double improve it, that improvement basically. So uh, with the, this M squared, and you see um, in the um, sort of blowout image there, uh, just how much cleaner you get. So a lot of that uh, seems to be from sectioning, uh, but you do get a, a lateral resolution improvement as well. Uh, now, how do they do this? Um, I'm throwing this up there just so you can see that it looks quite complicated. And um, essentially what we're doing here is in the process of a, a reconstruction of a SIM image, um, you eventually are going to, so you're, you're, you're transforming into frequency space, uh, your sample, the, those interference patterns that you get from your pattern, uh, your, your excitation pattern in your sample, transforming that to frequency space and then de deconvolving that and returning back to um, back to a reconstruct image there. Um, so with sim squared, what they figured out they, they could do uh, based on this lattice pattern and the additional um, uh, information they're getting there, they figured out that they could actually um, do a sort of additional deconvolution step and take things back to the image domain and do deconvolution uh, basically alongside the rest of the processing. Um, and what that ends up getting us is a twofold improvement in the resolution. So this also gives us uh, an improvement in an, another feature of the, of the instrument. So something they call apitome mode. This is actually a really cool feature of the instrument. So um, if you don't necessarily need super resolution, but you want to use the um, sort of the speed of the system and the live cell imaging capabilities, you can image at lower resolution, so with a lower power objective. Uh, and rather than using the lattice pattern, you can use a linear pattern. Uh, you don't need to rotate in this case. Uh, you still get a bit of a resolution improvement. And that uh, we've, we've tried that out, and that actually works quite well, even with the 10 times objective. Um, you get decent uh, quality images, actually, with a fairly low power objective. Um, with sim squared, with our 40 times oil lens, uh, Zeiss is saying that you actually get similar results to conventional SIM in the apitome mode where you're not even uh, doing any sort of rotation of your linear pattern. So I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Um, the massive advantage here is you get a lar much larger field of view and your section thickness is going to be not going to going to be a bit larger so you can image uh, things much more quickly. So for sort of larger uh, surveys, uh, live imaging, this would work quite well. Um, so putting that all together, where does the lattice sim squared fit? So it basically it bridges that little gap we've got between the structured illumination um, where we can use our conventional floor fours and, and things that generally the setup is a bit easier, um, but we're limited in resolution and it will bridge that resolution gap uh, to the more high resolution techniques that might be a bit slower or take a lot more uh, sample prep or have a lot more sample prep considerations based on your four or fours that are available. So just adding the lattice sim in there. Lateral resolution, resolution down to about 60 nanometers. Um, image acquisition time even faster than our uh, than standard sim. And Again, the same probes and live imaging uh, is quite well suited for this application. So I would like to invite all of you to uh, come out here and try it at no charge. Uh, for now, of course, we're, we're, we'll eventually have to have to charge you there. But we, we want to get some people in the system, try out samples, um, see what works, and um, hopefully uh, get some really nice data for you. So with that, uh, here's the, all the folks on the platform. Uh, thank you for all of your time. And we can open up for questions. <laughs>